Thoroughly active, clinically translatable senolytics restore alpha clotho in mice and humans. So there you go, that's the video. Boom. I'm joking. Let's take a look at this paper in more detail. So hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where we will first introduce these elusive clotho proteins, talk about senolytics, and look at how this paper brought these two areas together. So firstly then, what are clotho proteins? Well, this is the first time I've mentioned clotho on this channel, though I've been meaning to talk about them for a while. So clotho proteins are proteins that are found at the cell membrane. The gene encoding the protein was first uncovered in a mouse strain that displayed a complex aging phenotype suspected to be caused by genetic alteration disrupting a putative aging suppressor gene. And because Clotho is the name of one of the goddesses of destiny in Greek mythology who spins the thread of life, the name was co-opted for this gene. But it turns out there is more than one gene for Clotho proteins. There are in fact two Clotho proteins, alpha and beta. The proteins are not expressed in all cell types and are primarily expressed in the kidney, a region of the brain and a bit in adipose tissue. They act to promote high affinity binding of specific fibroblast growth factors to their receptors. And despite their name, the fibroblast growth factors that interact with clotho proteins are more modest growth factors and are instead involved in endocrine functions. That is, they can diffuse into the systemic circulation away from their source of production. Alpha clotho, since this is the one we'll be talking about in the rest of this video, binds to fibroblast growth factor 23. This interaction mediates several processes, including regulating phosphate and calcium levels and the health of kidneys and bones. In fact, alpha clotho is most abundant in the kidneys, though, as I mentioned earlier, it is also present in parts of the brain. Anyway, lack of alpha clotho causes phosphate imbalance. Phosphate, in the form of calcium phosphate, is important for bones. However, whilst I told you it's a membrane protein, which it is, the exterior part of alpha clotho can get cleaved and you can get soluble alpha clotho. This can be detected in the serum of blood and urine and is indicative of the total expression of alpha clotho. This knowledge will become relevant later. So it appears that alpha clotho appears to be an important protein. And studies seem to suggest that alpha clotho goes down with aging. And as that goes down with aging, something else increases the presence of senescent cells. Now, my speedy senescent cell recap. Senescent cells are cells that have entered a cell fate whereby they no longer divide and develop the potential to secrete a variety of factors into the external environment. We refer to this as the senescent associated secretory phenotype. These include many different factors, of which some include inflammatory factors. And whilst their chronic presence could contribute to continued inflammation and, well, and has therefore been linked to different diseases, senescent cells aren't all bad and are useful in wound healing and development and acting as a tumour suppressive mechanism. But anyway, just because there is a correlation, albeit in first correlation between alpha clotho levels and senescent cell abundance, it doesn't prove causation. But this now brings me on to this latest publication, Orally active, clinically translatable senolytics restore alpha clotho in mice and humans. So what did they do in the study? Well, firstly, the authors took the SASP, the secretory phenotype of the senescent cells, and put them on some relevant human cell lines, endothelial cells, kidney cells, and brain astrocytes, so cells that produce alpha clotho. And well, they saw the levels decline. A reduction also occurred with just singular components of the SASP, interleukin 1A and activin A, suggesting that these factors are involved in causing the decline in clotho expression. They even took this one step further by transplanting senescent cells into young mice and found that it decreased alpha clotho levels in the brain and urine. But targeting the SASP is just one mechanism to work out the connection, but why not just eliminate all of the SASP? Or better, why not just get rid of the senescent cells and see what happens? Well, this is what they did. And so here they used so-called senolytics, drugs that selectively kill senescent cells, and they used the already reported combination of desatinib and quercetin, as well as fisetin, and they detected increased alpha clotho in the urine and kidney in aged mice. 
It's worth pointing out though that senolytics didn't increase alpha clotho in the urine of young mice, most likely because senescent cell levels are low in young mice, and so clearing them has a minimal impact on the alpha clotho levels. And so this does also support the fact that senescent cells are maybe the cause for the reductions in alpha clotho with age. But this is in mice. What about some human data? Well, they analysed the previously conducted trial that treated patients with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis with nine doses of disacetib and quercetin over three weeks. In this trial, the treatment improved functional aspects such as increased gait distance and speed. And they also found that this correlated with increased urinary levels of alpha clotho, so in line with the mouse data. It's worth pointing out as well that the use of senolytics here to boost alpha clotho levels has the practical advantage of using the senolytic hit and run strategy as opposed to finding ways of repeatedly somehow administering alpha clotho. It also could mean that alpha clotho levels as detected in the urine could be one way of measuring the efficacy of different senolytics. So what are the take homes? Well, given that I study senescent cells, it's always interesting to hear more about their influence. I think here it proves some elements of causation and the involvement of specific SAS components in influencing the expression of this important protein, alpha clotho, which could link it to phosphate imbalance and the consequences of that, such as in kidney malfunction and potentially osteoporosis that occurs with age. But I still think there are some elements to understanding the molecular mechanism that are un- unexplored here. But frankly, I don't think I know enough about clotho proteins and their regulation to give a clever answer. But clotho proteins are indeed some proteins that I will be keen to learn more about. So with that, I hope you've learned something in this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.